I'm Oren Ponkilla. And I'm Kerry Thomas Cody. And we are the, the Skull Crawlers. Crawlers. And we ask you to suspend this belief, the show where we invite you to open your mind and expand your horizons as we discuss the paranormal, taboo, and otherwise mysterious occurrences in our universe. And on tonight's episode, Carrie, what do we got? Uh, we have a special guest, Che Jim. You may recognize him from TikTok or Instagram, YouTube. He has had a ton of viral videos that have just exploded into the stratosphere. Uh, excuse my dog, guys, and my daughter. We're all kind of restless right now. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we're going to sit down and talk to, talk, talk with him for a little bit, hear some of his stories. He told me he's pretty reserved on telling too many cultural stories. Yeah. So this episode, it's a bit not horror-centric. It's more us interviewing Che and getting to know him and how his rise on TikTok came and, you know, just some personal stories and you know, stories from us as well, just connecting, you know, he mentions a lot in the interview, just like opening up, having these discussions with other natives and just, you know, all right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And for any first time listeners, um, Orrin and I are just two native filmmakers, storytellers out of Oklahoma. I'm mm. of the Kiowa tribe of Oklahoma. And I am of the absentee Shawnee tribe. Yeah. Our goal is to tell stories and, <laughs> any media, whether that be film or podcasting or, you know, on the page and short story form or whatever. And so this is, you know, one of our ventures and what we would like to do. And we definitely want to get more native, um, native storytellers on the show. They don't have to be influencers or filmmakers or anything like that. Uh, we just want people who want to come on and, you know, tell, tell their people, tell our people stories and specifically scary ones if if that is something that you you like to tell um and so putting this out there we need some we need some women on our show so if you know any strong women storytellers who want to come on and tell some spooky stories uh reach out to us on instagram or email us uh comment whatever and we'd like to maybe talk to you and possibly get you on the show um and that user submitted stories like we would love to read some stories on the pod from you guys if you're so inclined or you're interested yeah Got something spooky to share we'll read yeah. it heck yeah uh so i think that's gonna do it for the intro and so we're gonna hop right into this episode uh just a heads up guys we kind of start right in the middle of a conversation it might be a little weird but it'll be fine and uh, with all you guys are are doing and and creating, it's it's a it's it's a wonderful thing. I, we're living, truly, we're living in the golden age of indigenous media, right? I mean, that's very you know, true, one hundred percent. Like, and we're but, trying to ride that coattail. You know, we're trying to take advantage of everything <laughs> yeah, we possibly can. Trying to catch, yeah, yeah, everyone's trying to catch <laughs> trying to catch a wave. That's you know? a good point. Yeah, and I, I love it. I'm here for it. I, I agree. I, I mean, it's yeah. I'll say it's about time that people are paying attention to us and hearing our stories and seeing our stories on TV and mm -hmm. actually involving us in the writing process and producing process of certain movies and stuff like that. Um, it's about about dang time. Let me tell you, dang. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. You know, it's kind of it's kind of kind of funny because um, you know when you guys reached out to me about doing this podcast, and I know it's obviously it's about the you know. The, the horror scary it's a sure that yeah drama, right? and i think i don't know who i was who i was speaking to in that was me was was very, yeah. okay yeah i remember mm -hmm. telling you like you know this is obviously there's some there's some things you know there's some there's some things you got to be careful about you know yeah talking about these that's things, very true but you have to be very careful about that and so you know i sat on it for a few days and i was like you know it's, i think it's a good conversation to have though okay. right regardless of whatever it is that you share or don't share it that's 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 your that's your thing mm -hmm. but um you know, um, one of the things that, you know, um, I tell people for, for me personally, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's an exciting time. It's yeah. an exciting time. It's a, it's a great time to be, to be in, in this, in this, in this sphere, in this creative yeah. sphere, but it's also scary. You know, it's also yeah. scary in, 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 in the ways of like, you know, we are still figuring so many things out. You know, uh, because we've never been here. You know, the indigenous people have never really been the focal point. And whenever we are the focal point, it's always being told by like a second or third hand experience. Mm -hmm. By which yeah. I mean, a lot of these movies and shows or 
even references are usually written up and drawn up by non-indigenous people. Western so, Yellowstone stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's exactly right. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, there are, I'm not, I'm not going to say that all of them, I mean, there's definitely mm. a, a, a couple of them that, that, that did some good things, but you know, historically speaking, right. For the majority of it, uh, there was a lot of things, um, that were portrayed and put out there, um, that were, that we weren't in the room for. Mm. And so, um, so, but as we move forward, now that we are, you know, it comes, it becomes this question of like, you know, um, how much are we willing to share, <laughs> you know? And that's yeah. for a lot of people, that's very scary. You know what I mean? That's, that's very intimidating because uh, I don't know, I can only speak from my own experience. Right. But I know that from my experience growing up, there were so many things that like you weren't like, you don't talk about those things. That's, right? that's like, kind of how I was raised too. Is like, you know, like my Indian name, not supposed to get that out. No, he's supposed to know uh, anything about your tribe. And then now it's like, I'm trying to like, wrestle with that. Like, how much do I share? Like, how much do I, you know, offer when people ask? Exactly. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. And it's, and it's not just for those people who are on the one side of the camera. I mean, it's like every day, mm -hmm. you know, I remember when like reservation dogs came out. Right. And, um, the first, the first, I think it was the first season. Yeah. It was the first season when they, you know, blurred out the uh, owl's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I was at work. And I must've got, I oh mean, I must've got like a dozen people over the course of that year. Ask me about that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like, by, by, by no means would I ever get that question in a million years, you know, yeah. from, from people, but all of a sudden now it's in their homes, mm -hmm. right? These stories are now inside their homes. These stories are now on, on, you know, it, they're, they're so incredibly accessible and, um, you know, and it's generating so much interest. Um, and people are reaching out. And so, you know, people know me, you know, where, where I'm at. And, mm. you know, um, I live in, I live in the state of Indiana. It's, you know, there's there, the, the, the indigenous population here is like less than 1% indigenous. Oh, right. Wow. So there's very few, I'm like the only guy, <laughs> I'm like the only Indian in the state. Right. And yeah. so it's so many people that come up to be like, Hey, what is this about? Hey, what is this about? And then you have to be kind of like, well, you know, <laughs> I, to, to try to navigate like what how much of that are you are you willing to to, to share you know yeah, yeah um and it's 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 really it's really interesting uh to kind of see how all this in people in the indigenous media and filmmakers and creatives um and even influencers you know how they're all navigating that and how we're how we're doing that and in respects to our protocols and our teachings but also you know being accurate you know Cause that's the, you know, that's kind of the, the two sides of the coin that I, that I see is I see people who are like, you know, really conservative when it comes to those, to those stories and those, and those experiences and what they mm -hmm. share, what they don't share. And then you have the other people on the other side who are saying, well, if you're going to do it, do it right. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. be accurate, be, 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 um, you know, be truthful. Mm -hmm but don't share too much, you know? So it's yeah, like yeah. This weird, you know, it's this balancing act that everyone's figuring out. And, you know, we've never been in this position before as indigenous people, you know, like, at least not prior to colonization or, you know, not since before colonization, you know, we've never, we don't know, you know, I don't know, mm. you know? And so as a content creator, as a, as a storyteller myself, you know, I have something that I, that's something that I have to figure out too, you know? And, um, and it's bringing up some really, some really interesting conversations, you know, and, yeah. and that's the, honestly, that's a huge, and so thinking about this to bring it all back around, right. See this, to, when I was thinking about this podcast, I was like, yeah, I think this is a great conversation that we need to have, um, uh, amongst other indigenous people. And you guys are, you know, filmmakers, you guys, mm. are, you know, uh, storytellers and, 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 and all, all that you are, you know, and, um, you know, trying to, have that hold that space there and 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 then have that conversation it's really interesting you know when, when i talk to other people about it too so well we we appreciate you coming on we appreciate you giving us this opportunity to learn from you uh i i want to introduce you everybody uh che right that's how you pronounce your name this is che yeah. jim mm -hmm. tiktok superstar uh <laughs> i've been seeing his videos floated on the internet for the past couple of years um and 
I don't know. It's just, it's what's funny is it's like non-native people who would be like sending them to me. Yeah. <laughs> what, yeah. Does this, yeah. what does this mean? What does it mean not to whistle at night? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, uh, well, you know, it's just superstition, you know, that type of stuff, you yeah, know, because yeah. it, you know, it calls the spirits back to or the evil spirits to you or whatever. Uh, I know there's still a lot more to it, and I would like for you to kind of talk about that. But first, I kind of want to hear about your rise in social media and kind of like what inspired you to start creating and what video took off that kind of created this whirlwind of popularity for you? Yeah. You know, uh, so I started in, uh, 2020. Um, I'm one of the guys that, you know, got super bored during COVID. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there was a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of things and I'm going to be was, honest. That was, like, that was us too. That's how, yeah, we, that's started. how we started. <laughs> yeah, we started man, doing filmmaking because we were bored and we had nothing else to do. So. I had nothing going on, you know, I was, uh, I was working my full-time job and I didn't really have a whole lot, you know, going on. And, you know, um, a lot of people got laid off and furloughed. I was one of the people that I lost my job during COVID. And so, uh, but I was at, I was at, I was at the, I was at the house and I had some, some people come over from out of state they were visiting and, you know, and, uh, we're sitting there, uh, one day outside and, you know, having like a cookout or something. And they, they came up to me and they're like, Hey, you should, you know, they showed me a, a TikTok. Now I've heard of TikTok. I've seen it. Uh, but to be completely honest with you, I was, I had zero interest in it. Like I did not mm. want anything to do with this. Um, you know, I thought to myself, this is like a vine thing. Yeah. You know? Um, and I know that when vine came out and I, I could be wrong. Cause I wasn't a part of that either. I wasn't a part of that, that, that craze. But, um, I remember when vine came out and the, uh, there was really no that I can remember. I mean, I'm sure there was, but I don't remember any big influences or anything coming from from the native side. Like I don't remember seeing native vines. Like I didn't see none of that, you know. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just another, you know, young person, teenage thing. And like I just had zero interest in it whatsoever. But um, but I had dipped my hand in comedy up until that point. I had done some uh online things here and there. Uh, did some videos on YouTube, some small things, nothing big, but uh, they were really like adamant about like you gotta you gotta check it out. You you, you you should try it. They start showing me some native TikToks, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that natives were on there. And like, yeah, I was like, okay, well, you know, maybe maybe I'll check it out. You know, yeah, that was the first I, time I ever saw like a native online community ever was was on TikTok, and those guys they have that YouTube channel, uh, Natives React. So I'm, I've got oh, my yeah. daughter here. She, I'm, I'm trying to calm her down to sleep. So you guys probably hear her cooing a little bit. Oh, uh, you're good. But uh, yeah, so that natives react. I started following them on YouTube a couple of years back, and then they were just like reacting to TikToks. I'm like, wow, there's a, I guess a lot of like a big native community on TikTok and like memes and stuff like that. And I'd never seen anything like that. So I was like, dang, this is crazy. There's like people are there's a community you know people are yeah. gathering together online and sharing jokes and learning from each other it was it was still just crazy to me yeah no it was it was really it was really insane um and i just honestly and i told me like they just they just peer pressured me into it <laughs> <laughs> they just bullied me into it I'm like fine <laughs> i'll give it a shot and because i had no understanding of how this worked i i made an account and I started making things and adding people that I knew. Mm -hmm. I thought in my mind that it was like a, uh, like a Facebook thing. Like only your friends will see oh, yeah. your stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I thought. It's like, oh yeah, my friends would think this is funny, you know? So I made something and, um, and it just so happens that I tell people like, I got really lucky. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, I'm not trying to downplay myself or anyone else, but I just, I'll take a lot, big portion of this, which is dumb freaking luck i just you got blessed by the algorithm gods i did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've had a little bit of that luck but you know we still gotta put in the work luck. to get there you know because i realized that like the first you know within my first i don't know maybe two weeks uh, i'd made like you know maybe two or three videos and then i made one and what it was is i've always in my head i'd always in my head like i like i always i do this thing where i turn everything into a song mm -hmm. and like I was listening to um, a Macklemore song, believe it or not. I was listening to a Macklemore song, a uh, thrift shop. And I always told myself, like, this would be a really funny round dance song if someone could ever pull it off. Because the cadence mm -hmm. is just right. Like, I do singing and drumming. So I was like, it yeah. sound, you could do it, you know? And everyone doubted me. I've been saying it for a long time. I'm like, watch, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it. Watch, watch, I'll do it. 
So I did. I went on uh, TikTok and I made a, a round dance song with Macklemore's Thrift Shop and um, put my phone down. And I came back, you know, an hour or two later, wherever one, wherever one was. And I had like a thousand notifications. <laughs> Apparently, like it had completely t- taken off. Holy what crap. I didn't realize what I didn't realize, I posted it on Indigenous People's Day. I should have known oh. that. I didn't. I didn't even put two and two together. Mm. Dang. Um, because again, I live in Indiana, so you know, this is exactly the most popular thing in the world, you know. <laughs> wow. So, uh, but everyone was using that song for their videos to promote their Indigenous Day thing, and so it just got spread crazy. And within, you know, a couple of weeks, I'd had over you know ten thousand followers, and for the next six months, it doubled every month. So you wow. know, went from ten to twenty to forty to sixty to one hundred and twenty. It doubled consistently for mm-hmm. about six months i just kept putting out this these stupid freaking videos <laughs> <laughs> it just kept hitting i don't know but i realized that you know indigenous people say then what follows is november right which is mm-hmm. heritage month and i just was on this huge momentum it was covid everyone was home mm-hmm. and locked in it was winter so no one was going outside doing anything it just like was a perfect kind of storm of uh of things that really played into the popularity of it all and um as I went along, I just got better. You know, one of the things that, you know, once you um, kind of get going, you know, you network, you, you, you become friends and mutuals with other people. Yeah. And, uh, you guys talk and next thing you know, you're, you know, um, they're sharing tips and tricks and stuff. And then just over time, you just kind of understand the algorithm. You kind of understand how things work. And uh, I just kept playing to it and it just says, I just never stopped. And it's been, it's been a huge, uh, huge blessing for me and my family. You know, I was able to, mm-hmm. you know, make a living off of it up until recently, actually. Uh, it was like my full-time job. That's all I was doing. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I did just That's recently pretty moved. impressive. I was, yeah, I was yeah, curious yeah. on how much it had actually changed your life and if you were able to make money off of it and like make a living off of it. So clearly mm-hmm. you were. That's pretty oh, impressive. Yeah. yeah, I was able to sell my house, move into a house that's three times the size. Like, you know, it's just, wow. it's been incredible Dang. yeah <laughs> yeah i know right no more, no more blanket doors for this guy <laughs> these are solid oak <laughs> that's what i'm talking about yes sir yeah so, but uh but yeah and then you know that those things lead into brand deals you know uh, i was really blessed to i actually worked with the um with fx on reservation dogs for promoting the show on social media i did that for three years in a row oh wow um, nice did that I did a thing for uh, Comedy Central. Um, I did a uh, uh, for Halloween this past year. I did um, a uh, like for Hulu their Halloween you know uh, mm-hmm. movie thing. So I did that. So I promoted that as part of that campaign there, and all those things pay. You know, so it's been it's been a huge blessing for me. And honestly, like you know, the biggest thing for me has always been just the amount of people that you reach and touch and you know talk to a network and you know so many doors open up for yourself and so many blanket doors open for yourself (laughs) yeah (laughs) real doors too (laughs) (laughs) so it's been yeah it's been it's been it's been awesome man you know it's been um and that's where that's where i'm sitting at currently you know it's just um kind of seeing where it goes i'm going to be honest i didn't really have any intention of this ever you know if you would ask me five years ago if i thought that i would be you know in this position as a you know, uh, online creator, you know, uh, full time and, and mm. making a living off of it. I would have told you you're, you're out of your mind, you know, I uh, never really thought of that at, at all. I was, I started off as a meme guy. I made memes online for years and I just took those memes and turned them into videos. And that's all I've been doing. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it, yeah. it's good to see, you know, just like, I mean, how much of these things just happen by chance and they just snowball from there. And then where you're at now. Yeah, yeah, and then well, that's what I mean when I said earlier, right? Like all it takes is one, right? All it takes yeah, is yeah. one big moment, right? One big thing it could change your life, and especially with you know uh, the climate up today, with you know online social media being as big as it is, mm. you know, it's it's you know a lot of people are are doing it, and a lot of people are uh, um, building entire entire lives and you know, gaining gaining some pretty good wealth along the way, and it's been yeah. it's uh, it's 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 if you're good at it, you know. <laughs> you know, go yeah, for yeah. it. You know? it's good. It's, it's great. You know, but yeah. But again, truth be told, I never really, I never would have, I never would have thought. I've been at my previous, 
you know, retail job for almost 15 years when all this happened. And it was just like going from that to this, it's just mm. out of nowhere, you know, kind of thing. And so, um, and out of it too, I've also was able to get into some, some movies. I was in uh, three, I've been in three movies so far. And yeah, I, 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 you know, doing some research, saw your IMDb. And I was like, wow. Yeah. You're, you're, what what movies were those? Yeah. So the first, so the first couple of them were, um, there's just some local productions. It wasn't anything major. Um, I think one is called uh, Dark Ground. The other one's called Glass and Berry. Both of those are horror movies, by the way. And then the the big one for me was On Sacred Ground. I did that movie. Um, I went to the Red Nation Film Festival for that. I got nominated for an acting award on that. That was a that was a, a, a great experience for myself. And um, dang, I didn't yeah. know that. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm sneaking yeah. around. There's a little <laughs> talk about. Yeah, no one knows, but I'm I'm around, you know. So yeah, it's uh, it, but yeah, again, it's been it's been it's been wonderful though, man. It's really changed my life in in so 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 many ways, and uh, I'm just very very thankful for it for sure. So, all right, let's rewind the clock a little bit. Uh, what what? How old are you? Where were you born? What tribes are you? Sure. Uh, so I'm 34 years old. Uh, I was born in Flagstaff, Arizona. Um. I was born in Flystaff, Arizona. I did live uh, part of my childhood uh, there on the Navajo reservation. My dad's full-blooded Navajo. Um, and my mom is Latina, but, uh, but she's also has ancestry with uh, the Odawa, Nishnabe tribe um, as well. And so growing up, my household was very, mm, it was very interesting because like, my, my, again, my dad's very much Navajo. And, uh, but just where we were at in, in, in Flagstaff, I, I grew up in a place that, you know, the locals referred to it as little Mexico. So it's like, it's a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. you know, I grew up with a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, Mexicans, um, you know, Hispanic people, um, when I was younger. In fact, I was, I was actually thinking about it not too long ago. I was like, literally all my friends when I was a kid were almost all of them were, were mixed with like myself. They were rather, you know, Navajo mixed with you know, um, whatever, but most of them were, yep. were, were, you know, Mexicans. I grew up with a lot of, I grew up in a, in a predominantly Mexican neighborhood, but my household was very native. So it was really strange, you know, for me growing up to have an outward experience that was predominantly, you know, uh, uh, Latino and then come back home and have a very indigenous household. My mom, um, my mom is a, uh, uh, she grew up in, in foster care her whole life, so she didn't really have um, um, connections or, or you know, didn't really grow up as a Latina. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it was getting pretty much dominated by, by my father and, and his, his, you know, that, that heritage of, of myself. And so, you know, I've always identified myself as a, as a, as a Navajo, as a, as a Dene. And, um, and would yeah, you I'm, consider yourself? as they say, tradition, did you grow tradition. up traditional? Yeah, I do. I do. I grew up again. I was, I was, I, I was very, I was very fortunate enough when I was growing up to be surrounded by, um, some very, some very, um, traditional people, very traditional people. My dad is a, um, my dad's is a Vietnam veteran. And so, uh, when my dad, you know, um, and my dad, my grandparents were, they were in boarding school and, you know, they were very Catholic. My grandparents mm -hmm. were extremely Catholic. And, um, and so when my, but my dad tells the story, um, about when he was in, when he was in Vietnam, that he was, he served with a guy who was, um, who was native. One of the guys in his unit was also native. And, uh, you know, back then everything was very racially segregated. So yeah. you know, all the you know African Americans and the whites and this and that. So he's like, you know, as, as there's only two natives, so they kind of just hung out together. <laughs> you know? And uh, but he was saying that 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 guy used to give him a hard time, you know, because that guy was a traditional native, mm. and my dad wasn't because he was grew up you grew up Catholic. And so um, when he came back, when he got discharged from from the army, he wanted to he made like a commitment to himself, right, that he was going to rediscover what it means to be native mm -hmm. and um and through that through that journey of his from you know the mid 70s up until i was born in in, uh, in 89 you know he did a really good job of of providing and building this community and these networks of people that he brought into our lives you know 
uh, uncles and aunts that you know aren't really biologically uncles and aunts but you guys yeah, are, yeah. You know, relatives you know to to come around and, and help raise us when we were young you know so i i had a really good opportunity to to, to learn a lot of things when i was younger and uh and experience things and kind of be very culturally uh involved uh with my community out there when i was young and then once i uh my parents ended up divorcing when i was around 10 and um and it was around that 10 of 10 10 12 ish somewhere in there uh, i moved and uh, my mom is a uh she's a professor so she has her phd in um native american studies oh, wow so, yeah so i grew up in a very academic household mm-hmm. too where we you know this like very book smart when it comes to you know um indigenous studies and so but she moved us me and my sister she moved us up to michigan and so i went from this you know very again Hispanic uh, neighborhood and culture with my dad and all my relatives to being plopped in the middle of the mitten right middle of michigan yeah in this super little hodunk town that's called alma michigan and i was there i i was kind of moved back and forth for the rest of my life i spent half my life in michigan and the other half in, in uh in flagstaff and so um but um but yeah it was very it was very uh it was very interesting because i kind of got a taste of both kind of extremes mm-hmm. you know desert and then in the middle of, of, of michigan yeah, yeah. and then you know with this indigenous community and flagstaff the town that i grew up in was 30 percent native and then again I, I grew up also partially in uh, tuba city which is on the western agency of the navajo reservation which is all native right mm-hmm. and so um and then i kind of would literally overnight switch my whole life would turn and I would probably moved back and forth about four times. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, but I got this really kind of interesting perspective um, growing up of kind of a, a taste of both worlds and, and isolated in both worlds. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, there in Michigan, there's almost, you know, very little. Yeah. I would say almost zero native influence. And then going to Flagstaff is 30% or 100%, depending on where I was at at the time. Um, and then bouncing back and forth every, you know, year basically for my rest of my childhood all, up until i was 18 so yeah and and and, and you know you kind of see that in a lot of the content that i create you know i really wanted to make sure that like you know that there's a there's a bridge that could be built right between mm-hmm. you know my indigenous experiences and then my non-indigenous experiences and where people can come and it doesn't matter if you're native or you're not you can kind of relate to it somehow some way yeah you know but um but yeah i did i did i did grow up in a you know in a pretty traditional sense um it just the only weird thing about it was just it depended on where i was at Mm -hmm. (laughs) if it was traditional or not you know Uh, sometimes it was super and sometimes it wasn't you know and so it's just something i had to navigate as a kid do you uh ever dance in powwows anything like that you know, um, so the only time I ever danced that powwows was uh, when I uh, like gourd dancing. I do some gourd. So I, I'm a veteran. I after I got out of um, after I got out of uh, high school, I joined the army and I got out. And uh, my again, my dad being a Vietnam veteran, he got me hooked up with you know some gourd societies. And so I would dance a little bit in powwows, but you know, it, it, I I didn't really. Um, I never really was uh, drawn to it. I think as much as people would think I would be, you know, it was around. I was, you know, I, I would go by, but I, mean, I always tell back I would go I'd eat. Yeah, yeah, How wows for for young natives, you know, especially if you're not a dancer, you know, it's just more of a place to hang out, meet girls, yeah. see your friends, just you know, get into trouble, whatever. So, like, they were a lot of fun growing up. I didn't dance when I was a kid, and I didn't start dancing till probably about six, seven years ago. Also, gourd dancing. Um, the Kiowa Gore clan. Um, but it's something that I really enjoy and I look forward to every year. I'd like to dance more, but, uh, you know, we only have the one big powwow out here for the Kiowas. <laughs> and, um, you know, I know that there are powwows all over Oklahoma, you know, mm-hmm. every weekend, especially in the summer, but, uh, yeah, actually, uh, I would like to get out more, um, uh, go meet some people, dance, do that thing and hear stories, kind of whatever. Um, and then just really like get more in touch with, with my people, my culture, my history, my ancestors. Uh, my dad was the same way as you as his parents, um, real hardcore Pentecostal. And they, <laughs> they basically wanted to 
get the the Indian out of their kids. And so they didn't have them speak Kiowa or anything like that. You know, they took them to church. They wanted, they thought that if they're, you know, if they're white, they had clear, better English, they'd have an easier life. And, you know, it did help in a sense, you know, but, you know, my dad, when he was in his twenties, wanted to rediscover his roots and kind of went through the same path as your dad. And, um, but during my childhood, he was, you know, he's having some substance abuse problems to where like he really wasn't involved in cultural things the way that, you know, he would, would have wanted, but we still did like sweat, uh, sweat lodges and stuff like that, which were awesome, especially they're very formative for me when I was a teenager. That's where I was given my Indian name when I turned 13, when I became a man, I was in a sweat lodge and I really learned a lot about myself and, and the sweat. And later in life, when I did get into dancing and stuff like that, it was, it was, it was a timing thing for me where before that I didn't necessarily want to learn more about my people. I thought I was content with where I was, you know, and content in life. And it it came to me at the right time. And like, now that I'm a dad, I really want to teach my kids kind of what I didn't know and have them be more involved in their culture and stuff like that. So we can keep these stories going and keep these practices and this culture alive for as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah, And for, for me growing up, um, I'm full-blooded absentee Shawnee um, or enrolled absentee Shawnee and half Shawnee, half Kickapoo. Um, Just for me growing up, it was, I was around it all the time. Um, uh, We did stomp dances in the summer and fall which I guess would brown dance is the same thing. Um, but it never really went to powwows. It was more like in internal in the tribe yeah. where we had the stomp dances. Um, and then, yeah, I was just always around it. And like, for me, or I guess for all natives, like your grandparents are like big, like top, like, and you know, you stay tradition, you do tradition stuff for them. And then when my grandparents kind of passed away, like that stuff kind of like stopped and getting older now. And, you know, prospect of starting a family and stuff like that like carrie said and i want to you know learn that stuff again or get back into it you know i speak some of my language but not a whole lot and that's one thing i want to learn um but yeah that's you know that's my background at least yeah yeah those are you know it's it's um it's it's something that i've that i've seen and and it's and it's really it's really it's really wonderful you know I, I i'm i'm so happy to see that there are so many people you know i always tell you like i was i was uh i was native before it was cool you know like that was, you know, <laughs> before it was a thing you know <laughs> that way and you know again i was very fortunate enough to have a lot of those same things growing up you know um and um you know having ac- access to to culture and ceremony like mm-hmm. my dad speaks fluent Navo. Uh, I'm not a fluent speaker myself, but same thing. You know, I'm kind of on that reconnection journey in that in that sense. And so, you know, but um, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, but I've been. Uh oh, I think we lost Che. Yeah. There. All right, <laughs> listeners, we had some audio issues, but we're back. Che is back. He's got some nice headphones in. We were talking about uh, our journeys and. Mm finding our roots and we're all kind of on the same journey, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, a quick question, just tying it back into our earlier talk about TikTok um, and film and your background in acting. Uh, in some of your TikToks, you use the medium to tell short form horror stories. Like on, I like the one you did on New Year's about Dear Woman. Um, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> do you have any aspirations of like doing or dipping your toes into like the creative side of the film industry or like working like writing or directing a short uh you know um i definitely have a lot of interest in it i love storytelling i like creating i mean that's always mm-hmm. why i do it right because i really enjoy uh telling these stories and you know and creating an image in my mind and putting it you know and obviously when you're on short form content like like tiktok and you know there's only so much you can really do but um but i do i definitely would i would love i would love to do that you know um 
I pride myself on the fact that, you know, a lot of the things I'd say, you know, 99% of the stuff that you see on my page is entirely original content. Mm. You know, I try my best to obviously as creators and, you know, storytellers or whatever, you know, you draw inspiration, right? Whether it's yeah. from your real life experiences, or maybe you saw something and it kind of gets the gears going a little bit, you know, there's definitely, you know, some inspiration there for sure. But you know, you obviously you're going to put your own spin on it. You're going to put your own, you know, your own uh, uh, twist on 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 those types of things. And I think that, you know, uh, it's something that I would be extremely interested in doing. I'm not quite sure how I would do that. Mm-hmm. I, I, but I do get a lot of people asking me if that's something that I would be interested in. You know, uh, a lot of the comments I get messages be like, "Hey, man, you need to do your, you know, you need to do a short story. You need to do this. Or you need to do that." And um, you know, I'm all for it, but you know, I'm still learning. Again, I've only been on doing this for for three years, and again, yeah. you know, I I guess you're kind of always waiting for the for the um, you know the the chair to be pulled out from under you at, mm. at some point. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I guess like for me, like the investment of it is something that's a little bit uh, scary for me because mm-hmm. you know I've only been in, in this area for three years, and so it's like you know, are is it, are you going to be something that that's around for? you know, three, four, five years, and then you just disappear to the wayside mm. or, or not, you know, yeah. um, I don't know, you know, but, uh, as things are progressing though, it, it, it is looking pretty good and I would love to do that one day, but you know, um, there's a lot of things I would need to learn. Like, I don't really have real understanding of what real, you know, videography looks like or post editing. That's something that I'm still figuring I out. Mean, that's, I feel- that's, that's us. Like, yeah. we just learned it. <laughs> We're learning right now too. Yeah, same yeah. thing. Lots of behind the scenes videos of our favorite movies that we watch and lots of YouTube videos. But also I will say as a storyteller and as a writer and as a visionary, I don't think that stuff's necessarily important for you to be able to tell a decent story. It does help, of course. But um, if you do have a good story, a good script, or even just a good idea, man, there people would come out of the woodwork to help you bring it to reality and you wouldn't have to worry about a thing except for making sure that the story is told right. So, I mean, I, I encourage you to pursue that because I think it'd be super cool to see what you could bring to the screen, even if, even if it's just a short film on YouTube or something like that, because I think that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, seeing your short films that you put on TikTok, the ones that have like no audio, just like creepy music, oh, and yeah. the <laughs> captions and stuff like that, I think it's just brilliant for for the medium that it's on and it really does like suck you in and you're like, Oh crap. And I legit get scared, even though like <laughs> sometimes you can kind of see it coming or whatever. Uh, it's still, I mean, it, it still is very effective and it's just because it's a good storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. You really, you use the medium well when you, when watching your TikToks is like, I'm impressed with them. Like, and they're always a joy. Like, cause uh, just speaking about your TikToks, they're pretty diverse like you have the comedy stuff um you know what it's like to be mixed and how i recently i really like your um natives if they were in lord of the rings or in they, they were in star wars <laughs> stuff like that um oops, sorry um but just to focus on your horror um where does your love for the genre come from because there's there's a lot of horror content on your on your page yeah you know um I've always been a horror fan, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I can't really tie it back to a moment or a time or anything like that. It's just something that like growing up, you know, I mean, you guys know, right. I mean, when you, when you grow up native, you're kind of like surrounded by these stories or you're surrounded mm-hmm. by, you know, um, I guess this, you know, very much, um, how do I say like this very, um, you know, like magic is real to, yeah. to, to yeah. you know, to my, to my, so when I was growing up, I'd hear mm-hmm. stories from, from people and, you know, uh, all those traditional stories, uh, when I was younger, I'd hear them and like, I, my imagination would just go wild, mm-hmm. you know, and, and try to paint that picture for myself when I was younger. And, um, and, uh, I actually, I would say though, that my, my dad is probably a big part of that when I was growing up. Um, he was really into it. Like, really into it i remember uh when i would go to visit him or something like that you know when my parents divorced i'd go see him and he had like a 
he'd have like a mountain of VHS tapes. Like he recorded, he records everything together. Yeah, nice. <laughs> he's one of those guys. Like you go, he has like a library full of things that he finds and records. Yeah. And so, but he would really get into like um, some of those, you know, ghost shows or paranormal mm-hmm. things. Like he was really big into that. And, you know, when we were younger, we like to kind of scare ourselves, you know, we'd get in, together and, and, uh, you know, tell stories or, you know, uh, try to see, you know, how, how badly we can, we can frighten each other. Mm. <laughs> when I was younger, I remember when I was a kid, I was staying at my cousin's house. And for a long time, I, I'm going to be honest, guys, for a long time, I thought this was real. Like up until probably about 10 years ago, I had no oh, idea wow. that this was like a, a joke. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember when I was a kid and I was at my cousin's house. And uh, we're up way later than we're supposed to be. We're up telling stories we shouldn't be telling. And, you know, we got, uh, we got scared. I must have been like, man, I must have been like eight, eight or nine. And we, we freaked ourselves so much that I, one of us had to go to the bathroom. Mm. And so, but we didn't want to go down the dark hallway because that cousin's house, there's a really long hallway from where we were at the kids. And then at the very end was, uh, was the bathroom. Mm. And so we'd got up. And we didn't want to like, you know, go by ourselves. And so we walked down there as a group, like, like that was going to stop anything. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, like, like, power numbers, guys, you know, it'll be fine. And so we walked, down, we walked down quiet as a mouse, right? Trying not to make any sound. We're not supposed to be up for one, hmm. two. I'm like, you know, if you're quiet, the ghosts aren't going to hear you. I don't know. It's just in my mind, it made sense. But we walked down. And he went to open, he went to grab the door, right? And like, uh, to like open the door and he opened it and it was so dark that you couldn't really see in there, mm-hmm. but the door like shut on its own, like Ooh. it shut and in front of all of us, right? There's like three of us and it shut on his own. No <laughs> and like we, like I was like through four feet from this thing, it slammed shut. Yeah. And I remember I like. <laughs> I was passed out. I just <laughs> ran. I ran back down the hallway. We all did. Ran back down the hallway and we jumped back into like our sleeping bags and our blankets and whatever we were sleeping. I don't remember. But we jumped back there. I remember hiding under the covers and hearing like my my younger cousin like screaming. Mm. And like <laughs> but I come to find out. I then again I held on to this story for years, guys. I was like, this this thing happened to me once. <laughs> and like I was telling everyone. And I was telling, like, I was telling my cousins, like, oh, you never found out what happened with that? I'm like, no, what happened? And I apparently my older cousin who was, you know, I had I have five, I had in the household, there were five cousins. It's always mm-hmm. the older and cousin, they, man. Is the older cousin <laughs> heard us scaring you, scaring ourselves. And when he heard that one of us wanted to go to the bathroom, but didn't want to go alone, he snuck out and went into the bathroom, hid behind the door. So when the door opened, he just like grabbed it and shut it. But it was our eyes hadn't adjusted yet. So all we saw was like a black hand. You know, come out and grab and shut it, and uh, yeah, <laughs> scared the shit out of us. Oh my god, man, we freaked out. And so, but it was just like little things like that, you know, along the way, little things like that uh, when we were growing up that uh, that just kind of shaped that. But for me, that was a very real thing for a mm-hmm. long time. That yeah. was a very real thing, and like, it just, you know, yeah, it was it was pretty funny. But yeah, there there was just. I, I don't, again, I wish I could tie it to something, but I think it was just the compilation, like just like a maj podge of like just smaller things. And, um, and then we all just kind of gravitated to it. Even myself and my, my sisters, I have an uh, older sister and a younger sister. Uh, there's five siblings all together, but you know, those two are the ones I grew up with. Um, but yeah, even they, like my older sister, like, she got married in Salem, Massachusetts. Like she's all about the oh, creepy wow. stuff. Dang. Yeah, yeah, really. That's awesome. It. Yeah, you go into her house. She like painted all her walls black, and like she's really into it. So yeah, one of the fun things we do as a family is every uh, uh, October we go to uh, her place. She lives in Rhode Island, so we go to her place and uh, and then we uh, we'll go to Salem, Massachusetts for Halloween and just see all the exhibits. That's amazing. And, uh, go through the, cool. the scary house but yeah it's been like a huge influence on all of us <laughs> so, but yeah that's awesome yeah, was there cool. one movie that you saw when you were a kid that kind of uh gave you nightmares night terrors anything like that oh my god dude listen 
Uh, my parents. So my parents were uh, one night. Uh, man, they were. I was young. I was real young. I was like four or five years old, young, and I I, I don't remember a lot from that time in my life. I remember mm. that that night. Yep. <laughs> but they sent us to bed. They sent us to bed, and they're like, "Oh, go, kids, go to bed. We're gonna, you know, mom and dad are gonna watch a movie, whatever." So we went to bed, but I couldn't sleep that night, and I could hear they were watching something. And uh, just being a little shithead kid, I was like, "I'm gonna go watch. I'm gonna hide, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what they're what they're doing." Yeah. So I like snuck down the hallway, and I remember like I was like beh- I like somehow snuck up behind the couch, and I just like peeked my head around the couch. <laughs> And they're watching The Exorcist now. Oh. I, they're watching the they're watching The Exorcist, and I watched that whole movie. I watched the entire <laughs> thing because there's so many quiet moments that I was afraid to like leave that my parents mm-hmm. would hear me. So I just sat there and watched the whole thing. And it wasn't until they got up and like, all right, we're, we're gonna you know let's go to bed. And then I finally snuck back into my room. But I didn't sleep for like three days. Like I was ruined. Yeah. That movie <laughs> ruined me. I was convinced that I was going to get um, possessed. I was convinced. I remember <laughs> asking. Like I asked. I asked my mom and dad. I was like, "Is, is possession real?" And they, they remember they looking at me and being like, "Why do you ask?" <laughs> <laughs> they deep, deep down they do. I must have saw something that they were doing, you know. And I was like, "Oh, I was just wondering. I just heard about it at school. I like, you know, like yeah. lie." And they're like, "Uh." And I, I, again, I don't know why, but my dad was like, it was, it's a real thing. You know, like he, told me to <laughs> hey, he didn't so care about like, <laughs> you sleeping in all No, he's like, <laughs> I think it's his way of being like, you know, you're going to pay for that. Yeah. It's his way of just yeah. like, you know, toughening me. I don't know what it, his theory was on that, but I remember him telling me that it was definitely real. It could happen to anyone at any time. Orin <laughs> so, was there. <laughs> Orin was there a movie for you that you I was, saw I was about to say, uh, there wasn't a movie, but I was maybe like, five or six and at my grandparents house my uh my cousin lives like maybe like two houses down uh they kind of live all in the same plot um i went to my cousin's house they were playing a video game it's called clock tower and like the the monster or the bad guy whatever is like a guy with like a giant pair of scissors and i'm like five or six like i don't know what video games are barely know what video games are and then I'm just watching him play, and like out of nowhere, out of nowhere, like on the screen, the guy pops up with giant scissors, and I'm like five <laughs> or six, I'm like freaked out. I'm like, ah! I remember I ran out the door, ran back to my grandma's house because I was so scared because I was I thought I was gonna get chased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great! Oh my gosh. Okay, so I was gonna say mine was Leprechaun. Okay. I, I don't remember how. I ended up watching it, but I must have been, you know, six, seven, eight, something like that. And just being so afraid that the leprechaun was going to get me. I remember going to the bathroom in the middle of the night and the shower curtain was closed and I was just trying to pee. And there's a scene, I think it's in <laughs> Leprechaun 2, where he like walks into the bathroom or whatever. But I just remember saying to myself, leprechaun's not real. Leprechaun's not real. <laughs> and like, like I swearing that he was going to be behind that shower curtain, man. <laughs> oh my god we we used to do again I, it doesn't surprise me that my cousin did that to me when i was younger to scare me um but i remember uh i actually so um my sister my older sister brings this up every so often but there was uh i had scared her once so bad that she fainted oh, i was wow. yeah it was like a complete pass out the same thing it was in that same house actually where i watched the exorcist mm. <laughs> Same thing, I'd gone up to go to the bathroom and I was like, you know, peeing in the middle of the night. And I just hear my sister slept on a bunk bed. And my older sister, I could hear her getting up and getting off the bunk bed. And um, she had this doll, she was holding her doll. And I remember like peeking around the corner and seeing her walk down this moonlit, like, you know, hallway Mm. holding her doll, like, who's there? You know, Uh, I don't know why she went to go look, but I was like, oh, I'm going to get her. And so it just so happened that there's a gorilla mask that I had for like Halloween <laughs> or something. And it just so happened to be in the bathroom. I don't know why it was in the bathroom, but I remember being like, oh, that'd be perfect. So I grabbed it and I put it on and she walked or, to look into the bathroom and I jumped out with this gorilla mask on and like, you know, did one of mm-hmm. these. And I she, <gasps> and then just like, <laughs> out, just boom. Just no, like, oh, freaking 
<laughs> like, oh my god! Like I freaked out. I thought I was gonna get in trouble, and so I got super freaked out. I didn't know what to do, and so I just waited for a couple seconds. And she didn't like get up. She just laid mm. there unconscious. Completely. Yeah, like one of those goats uh. that you scare and they tip over. <laughs> <laughs> so I got freaked out, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta hide the evidence. And so I like, grabbed her, and I d- drug her back to the room, and I left her, and I went back to her, room, and I went to sleep. Okay. And uh, uh, you're all tucking her in. You're like, Shh. I know. I was about to say, yeah, drag her back to the bed, put her back in bed. <laughs> yeah, you didn't see anything. No. You're <laughs> dreamy. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, I was waiting for for her to come in, and be like, "What did you? Know, what did you do?" Like, but she, they had no recollection of any oh, of this. Wow. Yeah. See, the next day she woke up, and you know, I, I was waiting for her to tell my mom or my dad, and then get in trouble. But she didn't say anything the whole day. I was like waiting for it, and she never said anything about it. And then it wasn't until about like a week or two later, she was staring at me one day. I, at that point, I thought I was in the clear. And she's like, did you scare me with that freaking Jager? <laughs> no, it wasn't me, man. I'm just talking about, you know, like I played it off. But she like had like a memory come back. But I don't know. Yeah, it was pretty funny though. But yeah, we were always <laughs> freaking each other out. And, and uh, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty strong memory too. I remember that. <laughs> man, I'm telling you. So, Any right. personal ghost stories that you might want to tell us? You know, um, I do have I do have a story that I that, that I wanted to share. Um, you know the you know one of the things that I guess I wanted before I get there before I get there I wanted to I wanted to say one thing right you know and that's um, you know obviously as as indigenous people we, we have our protocols. Right? Mm-hmm. And these protocols exist for a reason, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, uh, I think for a lot of people, you know, and it's really interesting because I think that, you know, um, again, like I said, we're, we're really kind of discovering like, again, like, you know, how we were as indigenous people, we want that representation, right? Like if we're going to be these things. We want it to be told in the right way and, and, and whatever, and not to repeat myself, but you know, that's, that's, that's a very real thing. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I remember, uh, growing up and a lot of things being taboo, you know, don't talk about this, don't talk about that, those things can come back or whatever, you know, whatever the beliefs that, you know, um, and so for me, I, I, I carry that very strongly with myself, you know, um, and, uh, you know, I think that I can, like, uh, like I said, you know, as the indigenous storytellers and, and creators, we're still kind of understanding that a little bit and still figuring that out. You know, and so, um, but again, I am one of those people to where, you know, I don't really like to share too much because, because of those teachings, because of those things, you know, um, and again, there's a reason for that. I think one of the, the things that people often forget, you know, cause I've had people ask me like, why, why won't you share certain things and this and that? Like, well, you know, well, because you were told that, well, it's not that simple. You know, anyone who tells you that that's just the way it is, doesn't really know what they're talking about. You know, there's a reason why these things exist. There's a reason why these things are, you know, that, that, um, 1978 American Indian freedom of religion act is a big thing. Right. And I remind people like the reason, one of the biggest reasons why, right. We don't talk about these types of things is because, uh, you know, all because of respect or all because of, you know, this or that, or, you know, you know, yeah, and those things may be true. I'm not saying they're not true. One hundred percent, those those things are true. You know, don't don't talk about certain things. Don't share those certain things. But you have to remember that back in the day, right uh, before colonization, before before technology, it was never, a, you know, to talk about ceremonies. Never a problem to yeah. talk about your experiences. You know, because um, those cameras, those recordings, they didn't exist. Mm. Right. So how can it be? I've always asked myself this question too, right? Which is how can it be this super traditional teaching if back in the tag, back in the teepee days, right? Back in the horse days, that doesn't exist. So why is it a problem, right? Well, if people have failed to realize is that, you know, prior to 1978, you know, any type of indigenous ceremony, uh, ways of, of belief, spirituality was outlawed. Yeah, and people people don't know that, you know, like you know, and yeah. that was a complete you're outlaw. So yeah, you don't record things, yeah, you don't write about things, you don't talk about things because you could land you in jail. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. My dad, my dad always true. told us and he, he, he guilted us when we were kids by, you know, telling us that we should grow our hair, grow our hair out. Uh, Cause it's important because when he was a kid, they couldn't have long hair, you know, they couldn't dance in powwows. If they did, it was, in, it was in secret. You know, they had, they had secret 49s uh, and that, you know, I remember hearing about that freedom. What, 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 what act was that called again? It was the 1978 American Indian Freedom of Religion Act. Freedom of Religion Act. Yeah. And I remember hearing about that. And I was like, man, was it really illegal to grow your hair out? Guess so, man. That's crazy. Yeah. 100%. Those things would land you in the penitentiary. And there are very, there are people alive today <laughs> that are still in jail, yeah. still in prison because they violated that law, you know, because they were talking or doing something and this, this and that, you know? So, you know, it was a, it was a protocol. It was something that was great. I'm not saying again, I'm not saying that, it, and I can only speak from my own understanding. Um, but it was something that was very much created as a way to protect ourselves from our spiritual leaders, our, our chiefs, our, our people from being locked up. Mm. You know, as we talked about those things, oh, I went to this thing or I oh, did this thing, or I do tell a story about this thing that, you know, colonized people would think of as like, you know, uh, something evil in their, in their way of life. Right. You know, they would lock you in jail. Yeah. You know, so those, those, those protocols, that's where they, a lot of them, that's where they stem from. You know, and, and people don't don't understand that. But that, but what do we do now, right? Now, to, what do we do now that you know we are living in this time where that's no longer a threat, right? Like well, that's no longer a threat. You know, like I said, I remember growing up and going to certain gatherings, and then then telling us, like, hey, you can't, like, don't no writing utensils, right? Like, you can't write, you can't draw, like, don't because they're afraid you're going to document something. Even when I was a kid, they were telling us like that. And then I'd go back home and I'd see these books on spirituality. I'd see these books about this. I'm not bashing those people by any means. But what I am saying is that like, it's a weird kind of catch 22, right? It's a double-edged sword, you know, or, yeah. you, know, you, you know, for telling it, for not telling it, for sharing and not sharing. What do you do? You know, that, that's, so it's. I'm sorry. I was going to say that's very much a real thing for my tribes, like uh, tribal grounds for like stomp dances. Like there's still a sign that says no photos, no video cameras or whatever. And mm -hmm. you know, there, you know, we have phones that have cameras on them. You know, people take selfies and whatever. And like, it's still very much a gray area because you you see people take selfies and you're like, you're not supposed to be doing that. Like, why are you like doing that? It's you know, with the advent of technology, is like, what you know, limitations are there? Like, you know, how do we proceed using that stuff? It's it's very interesting. It's something that I click in my mind until just now. I heard you talk about. It. I was like, oh yeah, that's why we have that sign and we have. I was raised the way I was. So. Yeah, one hundred. Me too. Again, that, that's the thing. Again, I think that, that I think that's something that people don't ever really think about. Mm -hmm. Right? They don't ever think about like you know, oh, it's just the way that it is. But it's like, well, it's more than that. You know, there's yeah. a history. Yeah. Everything has a reason, right? And then mm -hmm. that's for uh, for us. That's a huge reason why we don't do those things. You know, because it it was a it was a matter of your your freedom was at stake if you spoke to too much or you documented something you weren't supposed to yeah you know land you in jail you know so yeah the elders and yeah you know the people would tell you you know no 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 don't do that mm -hmm. you know but uh but now you know and i guess i i you know trying to i guess the thing is i wanted to bring up and i wanted to i guess i kind of want to get your guys thoughts about this too because i've always wondered it right um as a creator as somebody tells you to those stories in my own way and you guys as as that like you know how do you navigate that like how do we you know, I'm not saying happy. I don't know, but I'm. Mm -hmm. but I like. I think that's a very important question that we have to ask ourselves, which is, you know, how do we navigate between those protocols and between, you know, um, those uh, those traditional teachings while also trying to preserve our culture and meeting meeting our younger generations where they're at, which is mm -hmm. on these platforms, which is in their homes on their you know televisions or whatever the reason is right yeah like where like, you know how do we we do that and and inspire people by telling something that's accurate but within good regards to this protocol and how do you feel about that protocol yeah i, I would say for me it's the question of either a trend or tokenism where i like i don't want to whatever story i tell i want to be authentic like i don't want to tell a story just because it's trendy or whatever um like for me a lot of stories or ghost stories i've heard i don't have like tribal like centric stories it's like everything is like you know shared like a uh, dear woman like 
you know, stuff like that, other myths yeah. and um but like speaking to that is like I don't I want to treat it with reverence that it deserves. I don't want to make something that's um what's the word? I don't know, schlocky. Like the main when we talked about it with Sterling, I think what I brought up was in two thousand three uh john landis he did like a anthology short and he did it about dear woman but it was totally from the angle of a white guy so it was very much like dear woman is like she you know it had the plot the beats of the dear woman lore where she targets you know lustful men and stuff like that she's wearing it, like this spirit halloween native yeah. girl costume <laughs> yeah like, yeah on the frills and stuff like that yeah Oh man, I was I, I was like, dang, yeah, Jeez. man, but, yeah. It was it was just a, a trope, but it was not done with any reverence or any minimal research, or you know, minimal research, or uh, probably not any consultation from any native creators or consultants. And then you have what Sterling and his team did with Reservation Dogs, especially in this last season, where they tie it into the education about the boarding schools and stuff like that, where it kind of, mm. where they treat your woman as not only like a vengeful spirit just for women, but like this generational trauma of native people where it's an always reoccurring thing. And then the best way you can do it is acknowledge it and then move on and move forward. So I, for me, especially when we talked about earlier, about our, upbringings i'm trying to understand where to fit in as a creative and like what to share what not to share or if any of it's worth sharing you know what i mean yeah no it's it's uh yeah it's something that i've you know i'm, I'm trying to again i think we're all trying to navigate that you know in our own way and, and, and figure out where those uh where those lines are and, and what we can uh what we can do and again i'm not gonna i, 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 t- I was tell i was talking to someone about this earlier when i was talking about come on this podcast with them you know and i was like you know it's um it's something that we uh, you know that we have to think about and how and how we do that um and i think that it's something that you know uh i, I like i told someone like I, I i firmly believe right i firmly believe that for people who are living here on this land right on turtle island that if you're going to live here it makes sense that you should understand right and historically mm. they they don't but yeah because they don't care about anyone right at the time they don't care about anyone but mm. themselves when they colonize but you know but like i want to see the day where you know the everyday person understands the culture that's around them yeah right yeah. the culture that's here that's present that's always that's been here mm-hmm. you know that they understand that now they don't they don't like we're not there yet but i think we're moving that way yeah, and I yeah. think that it's a really good thing, and a lot of that's going to come from the storytelling. That's the ultimate question, which is where do you go with how? Yeah, like what's what's the line, and yeah, yeah, where's that line, and 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 where do you where do you where do you go with it? Because I've seen on a lot of different shows and a lot of different, you know, movies where people are certainly okay with one thing, and then on another movie they're totally not okay with that. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. like, you know for us i'm like oh no, you know yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know so yeah i just but i but i'm sorry but yeah, i just wanted to, to say that to anyone who's listening and watching this podcast you know that it's something that we're obviously still figuring out and yeah. even as a personal right personally right there's a lot of experiences a lot of things that i myself and a lot of other people have, have, have had but you know it's just not the time and the place but um i will say this though um uh when i was uh younger um i did have a pretty interesting experience that's not tied to spirituality or ceremony and nothing like that but i did have this really interesting experience when i was on uh when i was in uh tuba city right so mm-hmm. i was <laughs> so at the time i was actually in the military okay i was uh, i was uh at the time i was stationed in fort bliss texas and i'd come back home to visit my dad um over a uh a leave mm. right so i was on i was on r and r i was coming back home and so i was visiting him and um my sister also was with was there visiting my dad my older sister as well as one of my cousins and so uh 
uh, I think my cousin that came up with me, he came up with me. Um, I, I visit some family in Flagstaff and I'm going to go see my dad in tuba. He's like, well, you know, mind if I roll like, yeah, man, come on, dude, come, mm-hmm. come, 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 come kick it. You know? So we jumped in a you know, little Ford truck and we drove back up to my dad's and hung out there. And we we're up late at night. My dad had already gone to bed and in, in tuba city, there's this place it's called TC Hill and, uh, it's tuba city hill, TC Hill. Right? Okay. <laughs> And so they call it TC Hill because on the hill there's a they put in rocks like a big old T. Oh, okay. And then a C. So when you first, it's like their water tower. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A, a, a hill, a central landmark in town. Exactly. It's like, oh, yeah. be sure TC Hill, you know. <laughs> and so we were sitting there one night, and uh, my dad was asleep. We didn't want to wake him up, but we wanted to go and like, you know, laugh and joke and just you know just enjoy each other's company. Mm. And so we decided, well, let's go up on TC Hill because TC Hill was pro- was literally right behind my dad's house, like right mm. directly behind it, right? And uh, I guess that I was maybe like 19 at the time. And um, so I got up, we got up, we went up to TC Hill and we're sitting there. We're sitting on this hill. We brought some chairs up and we were just sitting there, you know, smoking cigarettes or you know whatever, just hanging out, you know, telling stories or whatever. And we're up on this hill, right? And I'm, I remember looking out and seeing, you know, l- very, some some lights there's very it, novel reservation is mostly nothing it's just mm. black right there's yeah. not a whole lot of anything but you can see like a house light maybe way off in the distance like small things right mm-hmm. and i know that there's a there's a road that comes out of out of tuba city that heads due uh uh east it's a straight road takes you all the way to pinion mm-hmm. there's a road it's one way in you go right onto the hopi reservation and you can see it but i'm um, we're sitting there must have been like i don't know may 11 at night and uh, we're sitting there, and I, I see this little light, right? I see this mm-hmm. little light come down. And, and my first initial thought was like this, you know, like, like a headlight, like someone yeah. driving down a dirt road or, you know. i tell you the truth, I didn't really even notice it. Like, I only noticed it in retrospect thinking back on it. But in the moment, I didn't even think about it. I just like, oh, whatever, you know. And we're sitting there, and that light is sitting there. And... Uh, after a while, I look back out and I see it, and it's and it's and it's kind of getting bigger, mm-hmm. and I don't like. It starts to get kind of a, like a little bit bigger, and it was on the horizon, so it was like out there. You know? mm-hmm. And we're on top of this hill; it's on flat desert, and there's like this the light gets kind of bigger, and um, we're sitting there. And it wasn't until my cousin said it, but he's like, "Is what, what's going on with that light out there?" We kind of look over, and we're like, "I was like, oh no, I've been looking at that. I don't know what that is." like is it a light i'm like well it's like a car light like i don't don't." and so we're watching this thing and again it gets a little bit bigger yeah a little bit bigger and then suddenly it just kind of comes off the ground and like and you can see the horizon of like where the land is and then where the blue dark dark night sky because it was like a Mm. full moon so you can what the heck (laughs) and it just kind of comes off the ground right yeah we all kind of like look at each other like whoa what is is (laughs) going on there you know and at first, we're kind of like, it's still like, you know, in, in the moment of the time, right? And uh, granted, I was in the military, right? So, mm-hmm. and I actually was stationed on an air base. So I was kind of used to seeing aircraft yeah. all day, every day, you know? So my mom, I'm, I'm actually sitting there. I'm not thinking anything crazy. I'm thinking that this is an aircraft that I just don't mm-hmm. know what it is, you know? And it kind of comes off the ground. And, but it wasn't until it, as it's rising that I, I noticed that there's no like flashing lights, like on a yeah. helicopter or like a, whatever right or a commercial airline or whether it be or even on training military they have to have the flashing lights mm-hmm. um unless you're like you know doing some crazy you know um approved maneuvers yeah but you know but almost always they have to have like the little red and blue you know what i mean mm-hmm, yeah. i know I, I didn't see that I, the first thing i noticed i was like i don't see that and it's rising really slowly like it's kind of just floating almost and it just keeps going up and up and up and we're watching it and uh, we start joking around like maybe it's a you know maybe it's you know a balloon like someone mm-hmm. like you know how people like light like a lantern on a balloon and yeah like, let yeah, it go yeah. for memorial you know like i didn't know what we were looking at but we're kind of sitting here spitballing like what is this thing you know? and this keeps going higher and higher and eventually it's really high like it's above our heads we're looking up at it pretty high in the sky and it just sits there and it's floating, right? Just kind of sitting there. And this time, this is when we started to joke around like, oh, it must be a UFO or, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, but the other thing too, all right. So, uh, Navajo, you know, reservations, that, that's, that's, that, that, that land is held in federal trust. So like mm. you, 
don't really see like you would never see like a helicopter on the red. Yeah. Like it just doesn't yeah. happen out there because they're not allowed to, mm. you know? And so it's sitting there and then it, it didn't get, it didn't get serious until it started to move. And it started to, I remember it started making this figure eight in the sky. So I'm watching it. Right. And it's just doing this. Yeah. And that's when we all turn to it. We all start freaking out. I'm yeah. having a good time. But like, yeah. At this point, you you're know? you're like allowing yourselves to freak out, even though you probably yeah. were internally yeah. freaking out before. <laughs> but now you're like, okay, yeah. let's all freak out. Yeah. At that point, yeah. We gave our, we're again, we're all still having the time of our lives. Like, oh, yeah. this is crazy, you know. We're like laughing about it. We're seeing this thing kind of do this thing like this, and it's and it does it for maybe a couple minutes, and we're watching it, and then out of nowhere, it splits. Bam. Splits into two lights. And then they both start doing it simultaneously. Now, this at this point in the game, <laughs> the laughter stops. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we're like, wait a minute. Oh, this you is serious. Like, it's I real. This is not normal. You know yeah. what I mean? And I remember them looking at me like, what do you what is it? Because they, they know I'm in the military. So like, what mm. is it? I'm like, I am the idea what that is i've never yeah. seen that before oh, my God. <laughs> and i'm like talking out loud i'm like well it's not a huey it's not a black hawk it's not you know even a predator drone doesn't do that like mm-hmm. i'm in my mind i'm going in my head like what is this thing and it's just starts doing this figure eight in the sky both in tandem with one another and then after that after that for a moment i don't, couldn't tell you how long we were watching it doing this figure eight in the sky then it splits again into three and all three of them are doing it. And like, man, I, I at this point, we're kind of speechless. What? We're like, yeah. what is going on right now? <sighs> and then I remember what the one on the right uh, turned into, uh, into it turned red. It mm-hmm. like just turned into red. And they're all doing And then it broke off, right? So it like broke off. But the other ones are still doing this design. And it broke off and started making a circle above them. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I swear, you know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. here, like, what is going on? I had this little shit cell phone and I pull it out, right? And I'm trying to record it. Yeah. This is back in like 2008. <laughs> yeah. So, like, it was like a flip phone camera. I'm like, Man. like, no one's going <laughs> to believe me, you know? And like, <laughs> I'm watching it on screen and I, it, it's funny. It, I lost it. I wish I still had the video. I don't anymore. But I had it for years. But I remember like watching the video, you could hear my voice being like, <laughs> like no one's going to believe me. i'm like trying to narrate it because you yeah, can't yeah. see it in the, in the you know you can't see it but I mean, there's a red light you can't see it but i promise you it's there <laughs> you know and like it's like circling around these things right it's circling around the <laughs> and they're doing this thing and they're just kind of like dancing almost in the sky and they seem to be spinning around and then the one on the top shoots up into the sky and then like i don't know if you can envision this but imagine like someone has a light right and they just like mm-hmm. pull it back Mm. like it just shoot, it doesn't shoot off mm. left or right it goes like almost completely backwards yeah and then just disappears right just you just see like the light get big and then disappear and then get yeah. real tiny almost like it shot off away from me yeah right and we're all looking at each other like what and then the other two start they all start pulsating different colors so it's like red and green and then yellow and then white and then yellow and like it just kept doing these weird like in no real specific order because i remember trying to think like like i wanted to like this because it was like this no one's ever going to believe me like no one's ever going to believe me about this and it's just it just keeps going and then the other one came back almost in the exact same way but just backwards like it just kind of came back and then jumped back in line and they all started doing it then they all started spinning around each other they were doing this for probably like 30 40 minutes enough time Enough wow. time for us to like settle down and sit and like smoke cigarettes, right? We're like, I don't know what that's what you know what I mean. I wouldn't want to show you the show, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on right now, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know what that is, you know. And then and in so that time just, frame, um, <laughs> when when were you terrified and when did you just hang out with watch? <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably about 15 minutes in, like, you just kind of settle down, like, this is just happening right now. And yeah. Like there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like what are you gonna do? You know, call the tribal police. Like there's nothing. <laughs> <you can do laughs> <about it. laughs> <laughs> Officer Yazi's gonna have no idea about this either. So I'm just gonna watch this, you know. And so we all settled down, and we, and literally at that point, it just became us, like like watching fireworks, right? We're kind yeah, of, yeah. Whoa! Like whenever we did something different, mm. and they all like at one point they were all like flashing, like they would turn on and off and on and off. Yeah. In like 
almost like glitter, like, you know, and we're just kind of, you know, and that one point there must've been like seven of them at one point, just doing this thing. And I really wish I could think back in my mind about how exactly it all looked. Yeah. But I don't, I don't remember it. I just, I, I don't, it's just, it's, there was so much that was going on at that moment. And the whole time I'm recording with my little shit, little cell phone. <laughs> and like on this, on the cell phone, you can see maybe like two or three when I'm like, there's yeah. really seven, you know, and like <laughs> <laughs> narrate it. And, uh, it was a, it was a little, um, everyone called it my makeup mirror. It was like a, a phone that it was like that, that mirror phone. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? And then yeah, you yeah, turn yeah. it off. It was like a mirror. Mm. I don't know why I had that phone, but anyway, I had the phone <laughs> I had, and I'm like recording it. Right. And then at some point, again, probably about 30, 40 minutes later, they all just started doing that sucking back into the void thing where they just kind of shot back backwards from where they came until there was only one left and it just yeah. kept doing it. And then it, then what I saw is it sat there after it, it kind of froze and then slowly floated back down to the, to the, you know, horizon, the horizon yeah. and just, Disappear. It popped like a, was like pop like a bubble. Just that's wild. and then we all sat there like talking, like what was that? You know what I mean? Yeah. And like none of us wanted to like, though we were joking about it, no one wanted to legitimately accuse this of being like a UFO or yeah, yeah. whatever it was. But we were certainly at the end when we were walking back down. We were kind of like you know, you know, uh, trying to be normal. You know what I mean? Like just trying to like, well, it's crazy. Well, anyway, you know, we have to do it tomorrow. You know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like play it off, you know, and until we got back down, so I think we just saw a UFO. And I was like, I don't want to be the one to say it. I'm like, and I don't know if that's what that is. I'm not saying yeah. that it is. I'm not saying that it isn't. What I'm saying is that that's what I saw. Yeah. And it was, um, it was really, uh, uh, it's something I'm never going to forget. It's just, but I, but, and that was on, you know, the reservation. And that's probably what played, played into a, a huge part for me. Because mm -hmm. again, being from uh, knowing those, again, my mom and my dad were very much very political and they were very, you know, uh, my dad taught tribal government in high school. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, I know the laws, right? You can't have those types of aircraft in yeah. protected airspace above the, above the Rabo reservation. You just can't. And the fact that I was in the military and that I spent the last year to two years with heavy, you know, um, very sophisticated aircraft mm. that I seen it just about all of it. Again, I was actually stationed. I was living on an airfield. It was like three, four times a day, a jet would come by or you'd see like a little, you know, dog fight, you know, yeah. whatever war game going on. And I was used to seeing all kinds of things. Mm. Um, and I just, I cannot place that thing for the life of I me. Mean, this is before drones were things so or drones didn't. Yeah, you know, commercial drones that didn't exist, consumer drones that didn't exist, and even if they did, there's no way they could do that. Mm -hmm. It's just no way. I have no explanation for it. I have no idea. And I remember the next day when we were having breakfast with my dad, we brought it up to him, and we're like, "Oh, we saw this thing last night," and he kind of looked to it. They're married, looking to it, like, "Oh yeah, you guys finally caught that." Yeah, I was like, "What do you?" <laughs> He's like, "I see. We see it all the time." You know, oh, all the time. Yeah, you know, he'd be like, you know, you stay out here long enough, you see all kinds of things in the sky. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all kinds of things. And so it, it just, it, yeah, it, it was my, my probably uh, one of my more pronounced experiences mm. um, with something that on the reservation that I really can't really explain. You know, that was, yeah. that was, a, that was an interesting day for sure. So yeah, crazy, man. I, I, I can't, no idea. In, in that pretty, like, crazy crazy. 45 minutes i would just be paralyzed with fear waiting for like a beam to come down and just like <laughs> me up and whatever it's like yeah you know, that's wild well it's crazy because arizona is like really heavily like associated with that they have yeah. like a ufo conference in sedona arizona every year yeah mm -hmm. so it's something like you grow up with and you hear about it all the time but i never saw it you know like i yeah. never experienced it myself and I know what's that? What's that movie called? Uh, Fire in the Sky. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That Chaps takes Walton place. In, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that, that takes place in uh, was it snow? Uh, or was it globe? No, globe snow. Snowflake. It's, it's it's held in snow, and that took place in the Snowflake, Arizona. Yeah. Wow. Right. And then in, in the was it like the early two thousand, late nineties? There was the Phoenix Lights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Remember which that is one. like the 
Well, yeah, which is like the biggest mass UFO sighting yeah. in the world. You know, it's just, it, so again, you'd hear about it, but I'd never, ever saw it until that day. And, um, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was, it was pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy experience. Wow. So do you happen to subscribe to the idea that UFOs could be like interdim- interdimensional or anything like that from your experience? um i don't know you know i i really i really don't know i it, it's that i think there's a lot of obviously information coming out about it um because we had those congressional meetings you know in here in the states yeah, yeah. right about that and mm. um i was watching that that was it, that, that guy what was his name i can't David remember his name, he was on the yeah, 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 yeah. I watched I watched a few podcasts that he was on. So I, I watched the one he did on Joe, on Joe Rogan's podcast. Yeah, and um, him talking about those things, and it's so inc- it was so crazy to me how nonchalant he was about the whole thing. He's like, "Oh yeah, hundred percent, right?" And he went into like great detail about what these yeah. Yeah. what these things are. You know what I mean? What these things are, and he he explained it. And uh, you know, I I don't know. Um, you know, I think the idea of, uh, you know, interdimensional is something that like our human brains can't really understand, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we live in a three dimensional world. So the, uh, to, to envision a four dimensional existence is something that I don't think anyone can really do. Yeah. Um, but it definitely, there's something, there's something to it, you know, there's something to it for sure. And, you know, have you ever watched the show on history channel? That's on Hulu, I think, as well. Uh, the Secrets of the Skinwalker Ranch. I've, uh, I've heard about it. I've never, yeah. I've never watched it. I would recommend it. It's very interesting. Because uh, before I'd watched that show, if you had ever mentioned like Bigfoot and UFOs in the same sentence, I was like, nah, get out of here. I think there's a lot more to it. A lot more question marks above my head now that I think about it. But I do think that there are like interdimensional paranormal hotspots. Perhaps you were maybe at one. Uh, I think Skinwalker Ranch might be one of those where when there's certain activity going on, um, testing, whatever, then that's when this activity is kind of triggered and that you might see like a, a UFO maybe tear through the fabric of space and time and like peek its way through for a little bit and then just be on its way. Uh, I think that there, there might be something more to that. I, it's hard for me to think about like aliens being from other dimensions or anything like that. But if I just leave it at, I don't know what I don't know, then I feel like that kind of helps explain it a little bit more. Um, and then you have the idea of USOs, which are unidentified submerged uh, objects. And that's a whole thing that's coming around now. And I'm like, well, well maybe they're coming from the water. Uh, but I, I don't know either. It's it's fascinating. Uh, I think we're left with more questions now than ever. You know, I yeah. think so. Uh, during those congressional meetings, they released a bunch of footage. Mm. You know what I mean? And one of the footages that I remember really stuck out to me was that there's that video of that thing that's flying across the sky and it just like jolts right into the water. Yeah. Like, like it just goes right into the water. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, and then vice versa, they have you know, all these videos of things coming out of the water. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I, I, again, I have zero. Again, I'm going to be honest. I, I'm just kind of in the same boat as what you were just saying. You know, for a long time, I was like, ah, I don't know about that. I don't. I, I I keep my mind here on earthly things. You know, I don't. <laughs> yeah. really, you know, I'm not really up in. I'm not up there with, with that. But you know, I think that there's obviously a very real <laughs> concern about it now. Yeah. You know, you have governments and you have you know um and big and big big w like first world countries they're like eh, there's something out there we don't know exactly what it is you know yeah, yeah. and uh you know they're sh- they literally shot down ufos last year <laughs> shot them right yeah. out of the sky you know what I mean? yeah, that's so right, like, yeah. well, of course you know the chinese like, air, the chinese balloons you mean <laughs> yeah yeah, the chinese yeah. Balloon, yeah. <laughs> but i don't they had that one they shot down one in uh like canada and they shot you know, mm-hmm. one above was like minnesota or something like that like and then, the, then, then, then the, the the balloon. I mean, but I don't know. Again, I think that there's legitimately something to it. 
again, what those things are, I'm not going to sit here and, and, and say that I know what those things are, or what, what it is, but yeah, it's I do know. my brain if I think about it too much. So <laughs> yeah, it really, it it's really, simply yeah. one of those things where I just, I want to believe, but I'm not going to devote any time to try and figure it out. Yeah. 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 Whatever it is, it's way beyond my understanding. Yeah. Maybe we'll find out. Idea. Maybe not. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. <though. laughs> Probably not going to figure out anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, that was, that was a, that was a pretty, that was a pretty crazy experience. And, you know, um, I've also had like, you know, um, this, uh, this one particular story that I'll tell, <laughs> um, you know, when I was, um, when I was a kid, I was, uh, I remember this time because my, my parents, they, uh, when I was, I must've been, you know, like, you know, Right, right before my parents divorced, I was like nine, like maybe like mm. nine or ten. But my parents surprised me one day by getting me a puppy. I don't know why. Mm. I just remember one day I came, we got in the car and there was a puppy in the car. But that's like, you know, here you go. You know, like you just handed me this dog, right? And I was like, oh man. And so I, I love that dog. I'm going to yeah. name him Yeller. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it was, her name was Cherry. And uh, she was this little, cute little, um she was like a, just a mud of a dog but she was mm. very 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 cute loved that dog with all my heart right i i lived for that dog for that summer i had that dog and um i remember though i i only had that dog for a short amount of time because someone actually stole her oh wow yeah someone someone took my dog hey, and uh yeah i must have had a dog for like three or four months and then i came home one day and it was she was gone um but anyway someone took my dog uh, but anyway, so this was a very short amount of time, right? So mm. this story took place within these four months. When exactly it took place within those months, I don't know. I just remember it was in that time because my dog was still around. Mm. And um, I lived out outside of the city. I lived or outside of the town. I lived up in this place called Mountain Air outside of Flagstaff. And it was, you know, probably 20, 20 ish minutes outside of town, you know. Um, and for those people who don't know, you know, Arizona is an old desert and cactus, you know, the, it's, it's, you know, the fly staff is like 7,500 feet up in the air. It's pretty mm. high. It's actually higher than, than the city of Denver. And they consider Denver, you know, the mile high city. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty high, you know, um, snow capped mountains. It's the only place in Arizona that has its own ski resort. Right. It was a pretty special, you know, it was a pretty special place. Mm. Uh, but it's also has the largest Ponderosa pine reserve in the world. So it's mm. all Ponderosa pine, right? And so where we lived at in this little country, little community, there's, you know, wasn't a whole lot of people there at the time. Um, but, you know, you had act like your backyard was the forest. Like it was mm -hmm. just the Coconino County forest. It was huge. You know, we'd go in there, get lost all the time. Like it was a pretty vast place. Um, you know, Arizona as a state is mostly nothing. It's, you know, for those people who have never been out west or have only lived on the you know the east for like east coast it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around but this is literally like nothing and so but anyway one one morning my you know one of my responsibilities for taking care of this dog was that my dad would tell me you know to go feed my dog every morning before i went to school mm. so one morning i'd got up and he said you know hey make sure you go feed your dog um and um she was outside running around the dog was so I'm like all right and so I grabbed a little, little bowl of food and, and water and I was walking outside <laughs> and I walked outside. I remember I just so happened to be looking up at the, the, the forest or the, the, the mountain that was right there. And I was walking out and, uh, as I was holding it, I was like, you know, looking up and I was, you know, whatever, just looking up. But then I heard something and I, I, to this, it, and, and to this day, Right. I've never heard anything like this in my entire life. But it was like the only way I can explain it was that it was like this super loud scream. It was like a it was like a scream mixed in with a roar. Like if you can put both of those sounds together, right? That's what it sounded like. It was just the craziest sound in the world. We had black bear, we had elk, we have deer, we have javelinas out there. I know what those sound like. This was nothing like that. It was just this billowing sound, right? It was so incredibly loud. 
Like I remember when I heard it, this like scream roar thing that like everything vibrated. Like I remember that feeling of like holding it mm. and feeling like my body like physically reverberate to the sound, the sound waves. It was so freaking loud. It was so loud and it lasted for maybe about two or three seconds, just this huge sound. And then when mm. it ended, I remember hearing the echoes, like the echoes continued on afterwards. And I sat there <laughs> and we had this six foot tall privacy fence. And I was fully convinced that whatever this was, was on the other side of the fence. <laughs> you know, I, I was like, I don't know what this is. And I don't know what made that sound. Yeah. But it's like, it's like jolted me back and I heard it and I was like, oh, and I just sat there and then I was like, it's going to come over the fence. Like whatever this is, it's going to crawl over the fence and I'm going to die. <laughs> like that's what's going to, that's what's going to happen right now. You know? And I just sat, I dropped the food in the water and I ran back inside. I was freaked out. I was so scared. And I, like, I ran to my parents and they're sitting there at the, dinner, at the table eating breakfast before they go to work. And I remember coming in in like a frantic and being like, what was that? Mm -hmm. And they like turned to me and they're like, what was what? I was like, what was that sound? They're like, what sound? I was like, you guys didn't hear that? And it, it blew my mind that yeah. you guys didn't hear that because it echoed through the mountain. Like it was crazy loud. You know, like whatever this was, was extremely loud. You know, uh, I would only, it's like, the only thing I can compare it to volume wise, and it might be a little bit of an exaggeration as a kid, but like legitimately, like the only thing I can really, re uh, uh, like, like compare it to would be like a stadium speaker at a concert. It was mm -hmm. that freaking loud. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just blew my mind that no one freaking heard this thing. Like no one, no one heard this. Like it was <laughs> crazy to me, you know, Dang. And I was telling them like, there's something outside and they're like, you need to calm down. <laughs> like, do you need a glass of water? Like, are you okay? It's like, I swear, did no one hear this? And I asked my sisters, I asked my mom, I asked my dad, and no one heard it. No one heard it whatsoever. And I finally got brave when we were going out to the car to go to school. And I actually went around to look behind the fence. And there was nothing there, obviously. But I was like, whatever it was, must have been right there. Yeah, and I remember like coming back from school and like I ran like a little investigation. Like I was looking around for footprints or like something to tell me yeah. what this thing was, and I couldn't. I asked my neighborhood friends if anyone heard it. No one in the world apparently heard this except for me. And um, but I know it was real because when it happened, my even my dog reacted to it. Mm. Like if something was like it was real but like i don't know it just really weirded me out and i and i didn't think about it for years i didn't think about it for a long time um you know i let it go and um you know and and whatever and then fast forward right fast forward <laughs> until i was about 16 years old and uh, i'm no longer living there i'm living in an apartment with my mom going to school whatever and i was i was uh, eating breakfast one day and the TV was on, like, was, I didn't even remember, like, I don't know, it was on. Mm. And I was, like, just making my breakfast for the day. It was, like, a weekend. And then I heard this sound, right? And it was the sound came on the TV, and it sounded like a roar and mm. a scream, like a screech, you know? And I heard it, and, like, everything came back to me. That moment when I was nine years old came rushing back into my head. Dang. And I heard it and I like turned to the TV, like, what was that? Yeah. And I turned to the TV and it was a show about like Bigfoot. And it was a recording. <laughs> it, was it. A re it was a recording from like 1973 of some guy who recorded something in his backyard in the state of Washington. And it was the exact same sound. And I freaked out. I heard it. I was like, and it blew my mind. I was like, is that what that was? Like, you know, yeah. I mean? like in my head, I thought maybe it was just a really, you know, <laughs> like a really disturbed bear or something. <laughs> I don't know what it was. You know what I mean? But I heard that sound and I heard it come through the, the TV and I just, it all came back to me and I ran and I, 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 I went and got my, my mom. And I was like, do you remember that day when I was nine? And like, she was like, oh, kind of like, you know, she yeah, doesn't yeah. Remember. So I was like, I swear to God, that thing. And everyone doubted me. Everyone said I was crazy. But that's what I heard. Right. And by that point, the TV obviously had moved on from that segment. Yeah. 
So I jumped on the computer and I looked up uh, a clip, like that clip, whatever, mm-hmm. and I found it. I found the clip and I played it for her. She's like, oh, that's horrifying. I'm like, that's what I'm saying. I heard that and no one freaking believed me. You know what I mean? But I swear to God, that's what it was. And so, you know, my mom was always just, she was still like, well, you know, I don't know about that, you know, and whatever. So I don't know. I got curious, right? So I, I, it stuck with me for a couple of days hearing that thought on the TV. I'm like, you know what? I got to, I'm going to look into this a little bit. I just, I got to figure out what's going on with this because that was really strange. And so I found at that time, there's a, there, I think this website is still up, but there's a website uh, that was like um, the National like Bigfoot Organization mm-hmm. or something like that. It's like right? BFRO, back, I think is what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, that's what Bigfoot it is. Bigfoot Researchers it. Organization or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's an acronym, right? Mm. And so I saw this acronym. And then I, I, I looked into it and I, I, on that time, that website was up and it had a, a public, um, list of sightings, mm-hmm. sightings, right. Um, and you could go through and see sightings in any state at any time. Like they, they had it, like all the archives were open for anyone to go through and look through. Yeah. And so I was like, I'm going to look up this particular thing and that this is where that four months of that dog comes into play. Cause I knew exactly when it was mm-hmm. right. It was like 1998 between, you know, June to like September. It was sometime in there. And so I jump on there and I'm, I go through, I put those dates. I look at the state of Arizona and I look at my County and, um, they, it had pulled up a map and it pulled up this map. And in the map, there are these, you know, dots of, alleged sightings or experiences or whatever. Mm. And I found my address. I still remember my address. I found my address. And in that, in one of the months, and I, I, I got, again, I don't know what, so I don't know if it was correlates at all, but I remember seeing my, like finding my house on this map and doing like a five mile radius. And there were three in the same week Ooh. in Arizona at that time within five miles of my Holy house. cow. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, I told you, I knew it. I freaking knew it. You know what I mean? Like, I was so convinced. You know, right? I was like, that's absolutely what it was. You know what I mean? Like, I, the 16 year old me was like, that's it. I He yelled at me. You know what I mean? Like, I was real, <laughs> I was real adamant about it. You know, like, I was fully convinced. You got the you know, poster board that, with the strings and all yeah, your files. Really, like, <laughs> that whole week, I, all I could talk about. Like, I just remember, <laughs> You know, like that thing tried to kill me, you know, like I was like, it's a, <laughs> you know, but yeah, but yeah, I, that was a really, but that was like, they get, and what really elevated that experience was the fact that this website existed and that some mm. people went out of their way to say, yeah, within five miles of this little town, this little, I don't know, little village called Mount Air that they're in this one week span and five mile radius. There were like three, four, if you count mine, all yeah. at the same point. Right. And you actually, I actually got to go through and read what they saw or what they experienced. That was pretty mm. cool. I couldn't exactly remember uh, what their experiences were, but they like rated them. They rated them from like a, um, like a, you know, like, you know, like aliens is like, you know, like contact of the first kind. Second yeah, kind. Yeah, it, yeah. It was like the same kind of thing, but for Bigfoot apparently mm. um, was on there. But I remember seeing, seeing that and being really freaked out about it. Uh, yeah, I've I've scoured that website before too. Just looking at people's experiences, uh, because a while back Warren and I we did a really bad found footage uh, horror film about Bigfoot, and back then uh, we didn't know anything about making movies, but we did our research on Bigfoot, and so I was on BFRO looking at everybody's stories, just trying to figure out like what Bigfoot like does what 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 he looks like what is he how does he walk how does he sound and stuff like that so i've definitely scoured that website before and found some definitely interesting stories a lot of really bad probably fake ones but you know i'd say probably out of every 100 of those stories a couple of them are probably real so i think it's pretty interesting for sure yeah well like again like i'm saying i don't I don't know that to be fact. I just, it's just, yeah. it just, I remember when I heard the sound though, my back was turned to the TV. I didn't even know it was on that subject. I just heard it. Mm. It just like, was like a trigger. Like it just, 
I was immediately back in my nine year old shoes. Like that's what it was, right? It just in my mind, I was even to this day, I'm still convinced without a shadow of a doubt that whatever he recorded on his thing, whatever I heard was the same thing. Yeah. If it if it is it what that is, I don't know. I just know that it was something and it 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 just yeah, it was something I'm never gonna forget for the rest of my life. Wow. You know, it was pretty it was pretty it was pretty uh pretty interesting experience and and uh and whatnot. And then uh yeah, you know, um yeah, and I got uh I got I got I got one more, one more for you guys. Um and same thing, this one kind of this one kind of um um it's it's not really like it doesn't really take place like on like on, on like a reservation or nothing like mm-hmm. that. Flagstaff is a border town and the the, the first one I told that was actually in on the reservation. This is nothing like that. But it was legitimately uh, a pretty, a pretty uh, spooky experience for me. Um, but uh, when I was, uh, so when I was uh, 17 years old, I was living again. I, was, I moved back and forth from Michigan to Arizona, right? Yeah. So I was living in, I was living in in Michigan at the time, <laughs> and I'm I'm living in Michigan, and um, uh. I had just convinced my mom to let me stay in Michigan. <laughs> so mm-hmm. She's like, I'm going back to Arizona. I'm like, I want to finish out my senior year. Like, I want to stay at the same place. She's like, fine. You can stay. You can live with your sister. Mm. My sister's only two years, old, two years older than I am, which is a really bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, but like, we're like, all right, she's obviously fine. She let me do it. So it was like me and like a 17-year-old me, my 19-year-old sister and her boyfriend, right? We all live together. And um, so we're living in this place. And, um, I had my boxes that I got from my mom's house that I brought to the house. And, um, you know, there's this, um, um, we were trying to see how to set this up, but basically one day, right. We're, we're, we're sitting there and there's a, we lived in a duplex Mm -hmm. and, uh, in this duplex, there's a, there's a, um, a gentleman who lives below below us and uh he was a nice guy but he had suffered some type of traumatic brain injury right mm-hmm. he had some type of brain injury i remember he had a, a really nasty scar on his head and um as a result of that brain injury he had like a lot of nurses and people coming in and out to take care of him mm-hmm. so they'd bring him food and do things he's a nice guy you know yeah um but he at at, at, at night there is some unsettlement some unsettleties there because uh, because of a result of his injury, he made a mm-hmm. lot of noise. Like he would talk to himself or he would like talk to his dog or something. And yeah. because this is an old house and we all shared the same vents, I could hear him. Mm-hmm. So I remember at night waking up and like, I could hear someone talking from my vent. It's just him. <laughs> right. But it freaked me out. Yeah. Know? And so I was like, oh man, it's crazy. And so, um, um, but anyway, uh, we had a shared hallway. We had a shared hallway that went down to the basement. We had a shared mm-hmm. basement. He was on the first floor. I was on the second floor. There was a back staircase that was like a hallway that led down to the basement that we both had access to. Just, you know, so, yeah. you know, um, so I had put my boxes down in the basement, mm-hmm. right? And um, as we're unpacking over the next couple of weeks, my sister comes and gets me and she goes, Hey, I got one of your boxes. I found it in the basement. And I was like confused. I'm like, I thought I, I got all my boxes out already. You know, I mean? I'm like, I already have all my boxes. Mm-hmm. And she's like, No, this is, this is, it has your name on it. I said, My name on it. She goes, Yeah. So she pulls out this box and there, yeah, sure enough, there's a box that has my name on it. It's a little cardboard box that has my name, C H E. Yeah. And I was really confused. Like, Oh, well, I thought I had all my stuff. Apparently not. So whatever. So I go, all right, thanks. And I open it up. And when I open it up, there's a Nintendo 64. Now, the crazy thing about this, I don't own a Nintendo 64. Yeah. I've never owned a Nintendo 64. So I remember my sister turned to me and she's like, is that, you have a Nintendo 64? I was like, no, I don't. She goes, where did I come from? I'm like, I have no idea. But we're like, uh, is it the guy downstairs? Like, we were kind of going through this, like, where does this thing come from? Yeah. We ultimately decide, well, I mean, it has a name on it, right? So, I mean, I'm going <laughs> to gonna keep it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, decide, I, I decide to keep it. And um, 
and hold on to this uh hold on to this uh, nintendo 64 so for like the next week my sister and i that's all we did we were sitting mm-hmm. there playing nintendo 64 until like one in the morning right yeah we, yeah. we were just kind of going and playing this nintendo 64 <laughs> and then um one one night we're sitting there and we're playing and the only thing in this room was just like you have to understand that when we were playing this game we only had the tv mm-hmm. and we would turn off all the lights so you couldn't really see anything yeah but where the living room was right so where this tv was living room right directly next to us was um was our kitchen mm-hmm. and our dining room and we had a table there and then I remember we had like in the corner there was like a little game corner we had like board games and we had like you know uh I think we had table, ten- table tennis and cards yeah just yeah. stuff like that right in the corner and we're sitting there playing it and uh so when you when you turn the tv can't really illuminate that area it's just pitch mm-hmm. black so we're sitting there one night playing the game and my sister's like well i'm going to go to bed i said all right go ahead so she gets up and i, I could hear her walk into she, walks into the darkness and i can hear her get into her room because it's an old house and shut her door i can actually even hear her getting into her own bed like it's mm-hmm. pretty you know <clears throat> so i sit there i don't want to keep her awake so i turn the volume all the way down volumes all the way down i'm playing this game playing this game and then i hear something right i hear this really weird thing uh i don't quite know what it is Mm. Uh, i don't like this man i don't like this one yeah pass. <laughs> i yeah i hear this thing right and i remember i turned see the pitch black there's nothing back there i pause the game i turn nothing follows okay unpause the game i keep playing i keep playing and about probably another two or three minutes later i hear it again this time it's clear. It sounds like something's moving in that room. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> no. But there's something moving in that room. Mm-hmm. And I know that if it was my sister, I would have heard her got out thin walls. I would have heard her. Yeah. So I pause it again and I keep turning and I hear nothing. And, you know, I'm more suspicious the second time. And I'm kind of waiting a little bit longer. And eventually I'm probably like, all right. I mean, I even kind of positioned my body a little bit to be kind of facing that way so I can mm. turn faster. I don't know. So, you know, so I'm sitting there like this now playing, playing my game. And then I hear it a third time. This time it's unmistakable. There's something sliding on the floor. It sounds like something mm. is physically being dragged across the floor. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So I stop it. And this time I actually say, I'm like, hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> I say that loud. Bring it off. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but you knock it off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, but I said, hey, because uh, in my mind, I'm in Michigan, right? There's like rodents, there's rats, yeah, and, yeah. you know, possums, and I don't know. In mm-hmm. my mind, I'm like, maybe there's like a mouse. You know what I mean? That's yeah. kind of like, if I yell at it, it'll go away. Mm-hmm. So I say something and I wait and I don't hear anything again. I get it. I can't see anything. All I can see is just the illumination of this 32 inch TV. Mm-hmm. That's it. And so I, I wait and I, and I even said out loud, I don't know what that is, but you better cut it out. You know what I mean? Like this kind of half joking. I was really nervous. Yeah, I was yeah, really yeah. saying it to kind of like, like to calm myself down. Mm-hmm. You know? And so sitting there playing again. And I tell myself, if I hear it again, I'm going to, I'm going to go look. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I, and everything's in me. Like, I hope I don't hear it. But if I, at this point I'm scaring myself. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah, and all all I could think about, right? All I could think about was that shared stairway. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I'm like, I hope that guy didn't just come up into my house. Mm-hmm. Like my mind wasn't going towards anything creepy. My mind was going towards like home invasion. Yeah, Roman, yeah. Did you guys? Yeah. Did you like ever barricade the door or put your own lock on it or anything? No. Ugh. No. That stresses no. me out, man. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> and so, but my mind, that's all I could think about. I'm like, I, mm-hmm. I, I, I could just, like, I'm, my biggest fear is I'm going to turn, I'm going to see this guy staring at me from inside my own house. And then I'm like, and I'm 17. Like, what am I going to, what, what, what do I, what do I, if you're 17, you don't really know how to react, right? You yeah. have the real life experience to know what to do. Like, oh, I was like, I'll probably just freeze. Like, I don't know what mm-hmm. I'm going to do. 
But I'm, I'm not at this point. I'm not even really focusing on the game. I'm I'm playing it right, but I'm like in my mind, all I could think about was, I think there's someone in my house. Mm. So I'm sitting there playing again, and finally it goes off again, super loud, super close. And I tell myself, like my sister's in the house, um, I have to protect her. Like I'm going to turn on the light and I'm going to fight this guy, mm. right? Like that's what I think. So it goes off again. I get up. I run to the light. I turn on the light, expecting to see. I'm fully in fight mode. I'm in full, like, I'm going to have to murder someone. Like, that's it. Right? <laughs> that's ultimately what's going to happen. You know what I mean? So I turn on the light. Like, I run because the light switch is actually next to the TV. So I have to mm. get up from my, from my little futon and run to the light switch and then turn it on and then turn and then face it. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm at this point, I'm kind of already halfway out of the chair when I hear it. So I'm already, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Boom. Bam. I'm go. I'm there. Turn on the light. Turn on the light and I turn. There's the, that, that, that game corner, mm-hmm. that basket full of stuff was now in the middle of the room. It was in the middle of the room. <laughs> and I'm staring at this. It's an empty room because the table's pushed off. Because it's such a small house, we have to push mm. the table up against the wall. So the, the, the basket is in the center of the room. Mm. And ab- above it is a ping pong ball. And I see it just long enough for it to move and then drop. <laughs> what? No. Ah, I, this so much. I turn. It's in the middle of the room. There's a ping pong ball about two feet above it, just in the air. And I see it move to the side, right? Just like this. And then fall. Mm. It's hardwood floor. So I hear it. Mm. And I'm just staring at it. (laughs) (laughs) I just stare at it. And I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, what the, I don't know what to do. And and, and truth be told, I wasn't scared. I was actually really relieved because I was really expecting a person. Yeah. So it didn't really like. It's almost like I was rather that than than what I thought thank, it was going to be. Thank God, yeah. pulser, thank God it's a pulser. Thank God it's a pulser guy, so not some <laughs> <Yeah>. crazy guy. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just a demon. That's fine, <laughs> you know. But I see it, and it and it hits. It hits, and it bounces on the hardwood floor, and then it rolls to the side. It hits the wall, and where the wall is against where my sister is, the wall between the dividing my sister's room and the dining room. And then it just stops. And I don't know, I wasn't scared. I was more or less, again, trying to release. But at that point, when it started rolling, I was like, just trying to figure out what could have caused. I was thinking very rationally. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking, like, I have to figure out what that was. Mm. And uh, so in my mind, I'm calculating, like, I don't know what could have caused that. But it must be, there must be an explanation. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't immediately go to anything outside of the the the, the physical world. I just, mm. I just my that moment. That's all I could think about, you know. Yeah. And um, hits the wall, and then uh, I I finally sit there for probably about three or four seconds, just dead silent, just completely frozen. Not know what to do. And I kind of yell out loud. I yell for my sister's name. My sister's name is um, Sochi, but uh, mm. we call her Chio for for short. So I was like, Chio. And she kind of, I could hear from the other rooms, like, answer me, like, what? I'm like, did you hear that? She, she's like, yeah, the ping pong ball. And I remember being like, okay, so I'm not crazy. Like, that, yeah. you heard it, right? <laughs> she's like, yeah. I'm like, you need to come out here right now. <laughs> I need to talk to you. I need to share something with you. you know? So she comes out. She's like, what's going on? And I tell her the whole story. Mm. And I'm like, when you walked in, okay. So I asked, her, I was like, when you left the room to go back to your bed, did you see that? Did you notice the basket in the middle of the room? And she's like, no. I'm like, did you walk uh, in the middle of the room? And she's like, yes. I'm like, mm. you walked in the middle of the room, but you didn't see this. The basket was big. It was like yeah. almost like a closed basket. It was big. Mm-hmm. And it's a small little room. I say dining room, but there's a reason why we pushed the table up against the side because you couldn't walk on either side of the table without scraping up against the wall. So we had to move it. So it was a very small area that mm-hmm. this thing was sitting in the middle of. If she walked down it, she would have she would have stepped on it or had to step over it. Yeah. And it wasn't there. 
So I asked her, was it there? She's like, no. I'm like, all right. That's all I need to know. Holy <laughs> cow. And so. Yikes. That was that, you know, and that was the end of that. I don't, I, nothing, you know, it, it, it's just go the whole thing. Into- I, I put, I, I threw it away. Oh. 100%. Yeah, that's really probably smart. Like probably smart. Day, the next day, I was like, I don't know where this thing came from. This is some goosebump stuff. Like, I don't want, I don't, I don't want no part of this. I'm putting this away. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I packed it up and I, and I put it away and. Uh, I think I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't throw it away. I think I gave it away to somewhere. So I even wore my, it might be haunted. I don't know. It yeah, just pass it on to somebody else. Know, it's their problem. Yeah. yeah, That's right. Double it to give it to the next person. Yeah. I, I just, you know, they want nothing to do with it, but I, it, was, I mean, it, was, yeah. it was the ring of, uh, consoles. <laughs> the VHS tape. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what that long to, but holy shit. Something's going to crawl through the TV. Yeah, no, no. yeah, it was it was a pretty crazy experience, um, and like I said, it's not you know I know you know no disrespect to nothing or nothing nobody is not you know it's 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 not you know a ceremonial or cultural thing. Uh, like I said, I'm not really keen on sharing that kind of stuff, but that was something that really happened to me. Uh, wasn't really tied to anything indigenous that way, but um, but that was that was probably in my mind. Um, the one of the more intense things I've ever I've ever I, I more I, unexplainable things I've ever experienced. It was pretty, yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, you know, it's pretty wow. crazy. That yeah. is fascinating. And then, yeah, and there's just something about that house, man. You know, there's just something really crazy about that house for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I never really felt like. Um, um, comfortable <laughs> for the rest after that yeah you know i just always knew i mean i don't know there it just there were like uh, after what followed after that was just a string of events yeah. right just app one after another after that for that yeah. rest of that year mm-hmm. it didn't really end there it just kept going you know but uh and then it didn't stop until i left i moved out and it was the end of it but you know um yeah i i i, I don't I, I don't know I think your downstairs neighbor or next door neighbor or whatever was up to some no good or something. <laughs> I think there's something going on there, man. I don't know, but that's yeah, not normal. It, yeah, it it was really it was really nerve wracking. I mean, again, he would again. I, I have I'm not you know I say nothing bad about the guy. He was a good guy. He's always nice to me. He'd say hi to us and like whenever you know, see him. But uh, but at night, the guy was definitely having you know he, he struggled. He struggled. Mm-hmm. He struggled, you know, and uh, I felt bad for him. I really, I really, uh, I, I sometimes wonder how he's doing, but, you know, we're never close enough like that. But, you know, I spent, you know, the greater part of a year seeing him every single day, you know. Yeah. And uh, and hearing him at night, you know, he would have some some things going on inside that house. It's just him and whoever memories he was struggling with, you know. It's mm-hmm. just the way that it was, and so, and I'm sure that didn't add. That I'm sure that didn't help this particular situation because I was already like always kind of on edge, you know. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, what you know, um, if something was ever going to happen with him that would include us. And luckily, it never did. You know, never, never turned out that way. But, um, mm-hmm. but, um, yeah, it's uh. I don't know. I, I yeah, same thing. Even that basement, like I never would go down there. I was always like, no, man. <laughs> go down there and see something I don't want to see. Dude. You know, not necessarily, Yo. you know, ghost related or nothing. I just I didn't know what that. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. The ghost yeah, of the you know, N sixty four. The, the, the Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, man. Yeah, oh, that's pretty, that's like that's like the paranormal activity, you know, where they go up into their their attic and he's like, "Hey, there's a picture of you up here." She's like, "That's impossible." Yeah. It was a picture yeah. of her as a kid or whatever. <laughs> yeah. just, you can't make it um, up. That's just you know, exactly. That's just so weird that can't make like, you up. wouldn't like you wouldn't lie about all of that stuff just to make a good story. Like that's how you know somebody's telling the truth is if there's a lot of stuff in there that doesn't make sense. Because why would they make that stuff? Up? Mm. That's yeah. that's no, crazy. It, that was a really good story. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to say that one for the la- for 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 last for you guys. And uh, like I said, it's that's you know this this particular subject is something that I'm very weary of. Like I like to respect everything, 
yeah. uh, you know, mm-hmm. whether it be alive or, or not, or something I understand or I don't, you know, I think it's really important and also follow those protocols, you know, like I said, yeah. it's real important, you know, so, but I figure that, you know, same thing like what, 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 um, what you were saying, Oren, you know, it's, it's, they're not culturally related. They don't really have connection to anything that way and that, that I'm aware of. Mm. And so, uh, I'll leave that with, I'll leave those with you guys. Well, we appreciate you. Uh, those are great stories. Those are good time. Yeah, man. Yep. Um, well, I think it's going to do is carry unless there's anything else you had. No, nah, man. I, I, I just could listen for, for hours. <laughs> if you wanted to keep going, we could go. But, yeah. Yeah, we should probably cut it there and maybe you can come back another time, tell some more stories or something like that. Cause yeah, man, you're awesome. We appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you a lot. Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate the invite. And, um, uh, yeah, man, I look forward to what you guys got, got coming up. I'm going to check out some of your guys' movies. I've been meeting to, I've been caught oh, up yeah. on the podcast and catching up with reservation uh, dogs. Uh, check out, culture. check out it mimics. That was, uh, it was our baby. It's a really good one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about the shape shifting creature at this haunted bridge. It's pretty spooky. And then we have one that's pretty fun. It's called the scarecrow of Parkhurst. It's about a killer scarecrow. You know, very Jeepers Creepers esque. That was a lot Love of fun it. as well. Yeah. So check those out. Uh, and listeners, check out Trey Jim's TikToks, Instagram. He freaking rocks. Uh, he just dropped a new merch line. Yes, and sir. That's yeah. I know. Look at that hat. That's clean. <laughs> so check out his new merch. There's it's sick. I'm gonna have to give me a shirt. Uh, would you like to plug anything, Che, before we head up, before we head out? Uh no, man. Yeah, I just say thank you to you guys for what you guys are doing and the conversation. I think you guys have a, a ton of potential here to do some really good uh some really good things for for our communities for uh they hold these conversations hold these spaces you know I, it's just something that i've always wanted to do something i've always wanted to share but i never really found a place that i felt like was 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 respectful and good enough to do that i thought like i found that here so i thank you guys very much and uh and uh for the invite and uh yeah we're we'll seeing maybe i'll be back we'll see yeah anytime, for sure thanks, thanks for coming on uh, appreciate the kind words all right we're well, out yeah all right here we go Thanks for tuning in. If you like the show, please rate and review us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, or your podcast app of choice. You can find us on Instagram at the Skull Crawlers, on Twitter at underscore Skull Crawlers, and YouTube by searching the Skull Crawlers Movie Club or going to bit.ly slash Skull Crawlers. And as always, sleep with one eye open because you never know who's watching. And thanks for wearing your brown pants. Che? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Enjoy your night, guys. All right. Good night. Good night.